when we started this campaign that this was the message was really going to take off. The rest of the world seemed very skeptical of it. And my experience for that was traveling the country over the last three years, speaking the truth. I mean, that's what Woke Inc., my book, was all about. That is what, you know, Nation of Victims, Capitalist Punishment. I've written three books in the last two years, been to a majority of states in this country. And I didn't expect to run for president. I started thinking about it when people would come up to, up to me at the end of those events and demand that I consider it, say, hey, listen, I, I really need you to think about running for president in 2024. And if a number of people who you don't know, you're in different states across the country, tell you that, it's hard to shake off. And if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have taken this idea seriously. So I think what's resonating with people, I think it is the fact that I really am not attached to a particular result here. My goal is to speak the truth at every step. And I would rather lose the election than to veer from my beliefs. But I think that it turns out that might just be the winning political strategy, actually. And, you know, you have a lot of people in politics who end up becoming super PAC puppets. And I don't say that disparagingly against them. It's just how the system works. So what does that mean? What is a super PAC? Because I'm not I'm not I don't know the game here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a term that you'll hear in politics either. It's kind of one that I made up, but it kind of describes what's going on, which is there's a mega donor class that determines who should and shouldn't run. They're the gatekeepers, mm. typically mm. even who gets in the race. You take a tin can, hat in hand, ask for permission to run. That comes with strings attached with what you can say on the hard issues. Uh -huh. On the easy stuff, everybody's pretty aligned. You know, who can, you know, have a pissing contest on who gets to, who says the most anti-woke thing they can say. You know, in a Republican primary, that's par for course and that's fine. And, and I wrote the book on wokeness, right? I wrote Woke Inc. And so I share most of these convictions that others have adopted. But on the hard issues, right, in terms of how do we actually end a war in Ukraine that we should not be in, which becomes mm. a no-win war, that we're on track to create another Vietnam, yeah. or the truth about what happened on January 6th, about bank bailouts, about getting to the heart of what we will do as a nation to move forward beyond a politicized persecution of a former president of the United States that happens mm. to be running against people like me in this race that's complicated we got to roll up our sleeves on the climate cult on electric vehicle subsidies i mean let's get to the tough stuff yeah and and i think that that's one where other candidates have a hard time if there are consequences if they're beholden to somebody else and i'm not you're and, saying, and i think that's saying, something that's competitive advantage for me you're saying because they're, they're, they're connected to the super PAC they can't hit the ukraine issue the january 6th the bank bailouts the person yeah, if you're Trump. dependent on mega donors for uh -huh. your buttering your bread, you're restrained in what you can say. It's just so, a fact. So, 